Okay, so uh, I'm doing the pattern recognition, so it's a part of the machine learning. So we are mostly focusing on some kind of data analysis, looking for finding for the, like some patterns in, inside inside the data. So what we've been doing, kind of like the recent project, is collaborating with the NASA uh, to figure out what's going on with the climate. So, yep. The global warming is real, so that I could say it. So it's judging from the data, and uh, well, it's what kind of project is it? So we grab the bunch of data and uh, climate data. So it's like temperature, precipitation, uh, uh, some kind of like the how like the radiance, and uh, we try to figure out how it's kind of ended up in a different climate zone. So it's like it's a general feature with the climate climatologists that we have like the bunch of the kind of different uh, zones that uh, describe climate so like the tropics subtropics like the modern day uh, like the modern uh, climate all this stuff is well described and all it's based on like these parameters like the, the temperature precipitation or like the, the climate things so what is that we grabbed some data so it's the publicly available it's large data sets actually, so it's the, the, the span of the data is like for the like the uh, hundreds of years, right? So well, like hundreds, like the recent hundred of year, last century, totally covered. Uh, the resolution is very kind of like the precise, so we have like the grids of the on the map, like it's worldwide data, so it's the half degree by half degree maps, and it's a time series, so like there are actually many many different data sets, so we picked up some month by month variation of this kind of climate parameters. So, and what we end up is kind of the general thing. We have 24 dimensional data, which like the first uh, 12 dimension is the temperature uh, per month and the last, uh, and another 12 dimension is the precipitation. So this high dimensional data we analyze for uh, those climate zones. So basically, all the categorization of the climate zones available is just kind of a bunch of the hand-picked rules. So we use kind of automation, clustering, right? So the very easiest thing. So pre-processing, as I said, is the large data scientific, well, like kind of the, the standard for this data is like use NetCDF format. So probably some, well, it's, it's very, very similar to HD, HDF, right, HDF5. So, well, well a bit more advanced. Uh, but hopefully we have like the NetCDF library, very easy to use. So like here's like the snapshot of like the, just uh, getting some data. So like the, the, array, the arrays are, oh, it's kind of the matrices are kept in this format. So we just kind of like point to the matrix uh, by the LS and then do the pro, like the pre-processing kind of the reshaping, rescaling. So that's very simple to do in the kind of in the Julia. So up to like the, those four lines, like, well, it's the actual code, and I already have like the data like the possible to cluster. So clustering, K means very simple to use, right? So like we have like the clustering uh, um, package, and you could just download it and install and run. So there's the three lines of code and you have clusters. So what's the big deal? Well. The, big, the biggest deal with the unsupervised learning that you have to explain what have you clustered, right? So what are these clusters are? So you got the, uh, at the end of the day, just, well, like with the conventional kind of like the clustering algorithm, just the point, center of the cluster. And well, you could plot in a map. Well, it's not very kind of understandable what is that because it's kind of this point converts to the 24 dimensional, some kind of disc description. And uh, there is no way how you can describe this, right? So there is no meshing between these uh, handpick rules and this point on a, like the, in a, this 24 dimensional data set. So uh, in our university kind of, we define some kind of like the various methods of clustering that would allow us to uh, figure out pinpoint what's kind of, what's uh, what kind of uh, what drives the data that we kind of just partitioned? So uh, we figure out the method that uses uh, kind of describe the clusters as the linear manifolds. So what's that is just kind of if you look at the picture, so all these subsets, right, like of the data, 
they could be represented as uh, some kind of linear manifold, so like it's just subspaces. So in a, especially with the high dimensional data, it's very easy to kind of the visualize those things, right? So it's kind of some linearity in your cluster. So like we have those dependencies that we could basically, uh, well, like we can describe them, right? In a kind of system of linear constraints. So on using this method, we could kind of like, usually we could pinpoint linearity in like on the small uh, subsets, right? Or like the large subsets, like we, we could find it somewhere, right? and then kind of uh, try to explain with these linear constraints what's going on with the data. So our algorithm is pretty straightforward. It's like the basically stochastic search across like large space of like, well, it's kind of sort of combinatorial stochastic search across the large space of like the points, figuring out the best way to uh, position this subspace which would have the uh, cluster inside of it. And then some kind of heuristics that would try to separate those points from the rest of the data set. And well, it's, it was very easy to write in Julia. So uh, basically, I'm going to show two snip, uh, snippets of, of the code, uh, basically kind of the core of the algorithm. The, the first one is the stochastic search. And basically, it's a MapReduce uh, job on um, uh, some kind of uh, with the sampling and then calculating on this uh, with particular samples. So like we sample some points. Uh, basically, from those points, we construct the linear subspace and then calculate some kind of the separation uh, degree, like the, the values uh, that would allow give us a score how well we separate the data, right? Like how well we constructed this linear manifold cluster. And that is kind of like the embarrassingly parallel tasks. So during the course of like uh, clustering, we could ended up like the millions of the samples and uh, it is fast, right? So uh, easily parallelizable, Julia. So I, I didn't kind of really optimize. So you see kind of this graph is like the knee jerk. And so in this case, uh, kind of like those jobs that run in parallel, right? They kind of very fast. So it's just kind of matrix multiplication uh, plus some kind of linear algebra and some kind of like the sorting. So it was done very fast. So, uh, but if we could kind of create the bigger batches that it would execute in parallel, so it would be way more faster and we could see kind of the, the line uh, would be kind of going, not, by like not to the zero, but in times of the seconds. Uh, it was kind of the great help because after all running some kind of validation algorithms of this uh, on this data, right? So we, we got very uh, good speed ups. Same thing, kind of the good facility of the uh, linear algebra and the Julia allows us to implement kind of very efficient calculations. So basically this formula in the core of the calculation, uh, how like the, the uh, s separate the data and the left, left side is kind of the naive approach, the right side a bit like the optimization. So what we end up with, um, kind of all this experience kind of great, but after all, as I said, we end up with a very, very uh, uh, kind of like the high dimensional representation. So we plot it and here, kind of the shape file, uh, get fly, compose. That's the, the picture that basically bunch of clusters mapped. Well, like the uh, data is like the colors are random, but like they represent just like the index of the uh, cluster. So that's how we can view it. In other ways, kind of like the isolate the cluster and see what's going on with the data, right? And then so like all this again, kind of like they ended up with the get fly. Um, shape files uh, and uh, kind of more uh, general approach is the parallel map. So here we could see kind of like the variation between the um, uh, variation kind of like on the on, on dimension of the data. And the last one, uh, we have uh, some of the part reading in the R. Well, can do like without R or anything. So uh, that was been easy to integrate into like our research with the R call. So here's just like the small snippet of how we could use some, we'll have some kind of classifier reading in R, climate classifier. 
and all the data we just grab the cluster and uh, uh, filter the data right and shove it to the uh, our call routines and to end up with a perfectly uh, kind of like the, the uh, partitioned using the climate zone classifier that uh, or like the originally was de designed with the NASA people. So I want to thank uh, people from the NASA, right? So the Nancy Kiang, uh, Benjamin Cook, and uh, uh, some people uh, from the community that I work with. So the Robert Farley and Xing Zhu, uh, right? So that's it. <laughs>